But for now, <clears throat> don't look at your phone. Don't. We're doing the thing. Don't look at. Recruiting never sleeps. That's true. I'm Greg Tepper. That's Greg Powers. And this is this week in Cruton. I can't believe you're. Oh, my cut that to the camera. Symbolizes recruiting. No, it, it's recruiting at a glance. It's Greg it's Powers. What the life is. It's Greg Powers of Next Level Athlete. Uh, follow him on Twitter. Set Twitter at gpower79 and follow um, Next Level Athlete on Twitter at Next Level D1. First and foremost, this is not on the rundown, but I want to ask you um, about this um, this prospect I've been hearing a lot about. Um, I, I, I hear it's uh, he's really um, he's really rising up the the, the charts. Hank Tepper. Uh, no, uh, no, um, uh, Blake Carringer. Really interested to hear. He's a he's a Tennessee <laughs> guy. Uh, I'm very interested to hear what uh, what you think of uh, of Blake Carringer. Uh, six three three fifteen, uh, coming out of uh, coming out of Tennessee. Um, any thoughts on him? His profile, I believe, says high interest in Alabama, but oh, his photo suggests that he may be committed to Arizona State. So, for those who don't know, um, there was a bit of a a, a recruiting. Snafu. Yeah, definitely. This, this week, uh, this past week, um, uh, twenty-four seven. Well, rivals. I don't know. It, it, it. There's definitely a blame game going on between the two major companies, uh, but rivals and twenty-four-seven, in some sort of capacity, basically put a fake recruit on their on their board. You know, and I and rated him three stars. <laughs> I I'm surprised it hasn't happened more often. Yeah, honestly, in today's social media world mm-hmm. where you can create a Twitter profile, put a photo, and start claiming offers, there are going to be a lot of people who follow recruiting, start to retweet mm-hmm. you, you're going to start to get buzz, and, and it's not something that hasn't happened before, I mean, but it should be easier to manipulate the system as I see it um, in today's age. Well, and you made a great point on Twitter, because we were, we were talking about it here in the office, and then, um, and then I, I believe, you know, you, you chimed in on Twitter I think that this would be tougher to pull off in Texas. That the, that a, a pure hoax like this, where this was a kid, this is a, a fake player who was rated three stars uh, by twenty four seven for some reason uh, in rivals. And, and um, but I feel like it, you made a great point that I think it would be harder for this to pull off in Texas because. I mean, I hate to say it, but maybe we just take it a little bit more seriously here. <laughs> like, there's just a little more due, due diligence done by the people who cover it. Well, I also think a lot more recruiting funnels through the head coach mm. in Texas compared to maybe some of the other states. Yeah. I've covered, you know, throughout my 15 years of experience covering recruiting, I've covered um, ju- junior colleges nationally, which if you're covering junior colleges, that's a whole different beast yeah. because you have to verify – each and every recruit and even when you verify them they may not be a a real recruit in the sense that they can't qualify their Mm -hmm. tape may be great they may have issues away from the game Um, but you're talking about a database of 1500 prospects in every cycle and you almost literally have to go one by one to figure out what's going on with that and that really teaches you patience with Mm -hmm. recruiting because we're you know with Next level athlete, we have over 1,500 prospects right now in our 2020 Damn. database in Texas. That's a lot and, of kids. Right. And only 325 to 350 of those will sign FBS or mm-hmm. higher. Um, but it all comes from the high school coach. Mm-hmm. And it's verified information from the high school coach. And I think that's very important. So, yeah. it, by and large, if it's a checks and balances thing now with next level athlete, if you aren't in the next level athlete system, you probably shouldn't show up on 24-7 or Rivals yeah. because these are the prospects who are delivered to us from the coaches. Yeah, and so you, ha- you have a gatekeeper there right. in, in the coaches who are not going to feed you fake kids. And, and beyond that, um, you guys are going out there and you're watching the film and you're making sure, okay, I want to make sure I watch film on this kid before I'm going out there and, and, and rating them. Uh, I know that one of the... Uh, criticisms, one of the common criticisms, and, and one that I've levied against kind of the, the recruiting industrial complex, is uh, it sure seems, seems like uh, a lot of people want to take shortcuts. And, you know, the, the people who – I've got a lot of respect for the people who watch the film and say, I'm going to come up with my own opinion on this and what I think of this kid watching his film as opposed to just parroting what I read on uh, a website. Not plugging any shows or anything, but sure. we're season five – me and my son and I are season five into the wire. 
which is ah. the news, which is the news season mm. yes. of The Wire. Um, it's his first time watching. It. Of course, it's my third or fourth, yeah. right? Uh, but T, it's a lesson to be learned there with this and that. You know, it's not just shortcuts in recruiting. It yeah. can be shortcuts. I think I feel in media. Absolutely. And oh, the yes. world's become so much smaller now, mm-hmm. and easier to report news and take shortcuts in reporting news. And it's just something that you want to be careful of and if you can hang your hat on accuracy um you probably should and that's where i like to hang my hat we try to be accurate see it's greg power the next level athlete let's talk about some uh some actual prospects uh we're going to be really southeast texas heavy today a lot of a lot of big doings in southeast texas we're going to start with our prospect on the rise uh, go to channel view uh, another pr- another program uh fully uh you know familiar to, to prospect hounds um, this is a 2020 offensive lineman, uh, Paula Vipulu. Paul, you know what? You got I, it. You nailed it. I that. just got. Well, here's the thing. Once you do Halapulu Vadi Vitae, yep. everything else is a layup. Uh, but Big channel, B. <laughs> channel of you, uh, 2020 offensive lineman, uh, Paul, uh, Paula Vipulu, 6'3", 230, uh, starting to get uh, some offers from Missouri, uh, ten, uh, Tulsa, a few other places. Also, that's a, that is a typo. Three twenty. I was going to say two thirty. Okay, must be really so good. So he's a he's a big guy. Uh, what I like about Paula is that he has the ability to play inside or outside. He's super mm. strong. Uh, Channel View has been known to produce a few top level prospects. Um, you know, usually in every class, they'll be back this year with Paula. He picked up new offers this week from Tulsa and Missouri. Uh, Missouri is his second P five offer, joining Nebraska. Um, Back when he came to the Next Level Athlete Showcase, he only had one offer from Houston, but he took home O-line MVP award honors at that camp, uh, beating out guys like Hayden Connor and Donovan Jackson. So it kind of tells you what kind of camp he had. Um, I think he's the perfect fit at, Perfect fit as a center. I mm-hmm. really like his uh, ability at that position because he's so strong and he's super quick. His height may limit him at guard. And this is a guy who was, uh, you know, as you mentioned, if you're the MVP at this at, at, at the Next Level Athlete Showcase, um, especially from the offensive line perspective, right? That's that's saying something because you're you're talking about a kid who who beat out some of not just the best offensive linemen in the state, but some of the best prospects in the state right. uh, at at a, at a showcase like this. And we love giving, you know, you like to give the offensive. You like to give the MVP award to the best prospects at the camp, mm-hmm. but you love to see a guy like this who comes in and earns it over guys who have 30 offers. You know, he had one offer coming in, and he had the, an MVP type of performance, and uh, justifiably he should be on more college radars as a result, and he's starting to pick up uh, – pick up a lot of interest north texas offered him just a few days after the camp was over people are starting to notice uh paul v- uh, vipulu out of channel view let's now go to our commit of the week and this was another thing that blew up my twitter this week <laughs> uh texas fans were sure excited to get a commit from uh, commitment from the big offensive lineman from Pl- uh, port nature's groves um jalen garth another another monster six four two ninety, uh and had offers from pretty much everywhere but uh said hey I'm going to Austin. It's a great offensive line class in the state in 2020 mm-hmm. as well. Uh, Texas A&M's out of the gate strong with a couple early commitments, uh, and there's still a lot of big names on the board. Um, I think some out-of-state programs may be able to take advantage of that once Texas and Texas A&M are done taking their O-linemen. Uh, but I really love Garth's versatility. Another guy who plays tackle, plays right tackle for his high school team, uh, but has the size and strength to move into the interior. But when you're watching this tape, you can see that he has length, uh, can transition easily to the next level to secure blocks on linebackers, and he has really good feet. So I think that he his position flexibility and um, strength will mm-hmm. – allow him to to be able to get on the field and make an impact pretty early at a position that where it's hard to do that at all offensive line yeah and you mentioned this is a you know this is a very good 2020 class uh, of offensive line um and you feel like um i'm, I'm interested from your perspective that that obviously colleges are going to have needs every college is going to have needs and, and you got to put five offensive linemen out there right um with such a strong class in Texas, could you see these big programs, uh, you know, the Power Five programs, and then you lump in a team like maybe Houston? Could you see them taking more offensive line than, than maybe they? I hate to say need, but maybe saying because it's such a deep class, let's let's stock up a little bit. Well, the dangerous thing with saying that in mm-hmm. 2020 is that 2021's even better <laughs> <laughs> on the O line. So you're putting together two back to back years in the state of Texas where you're going to have uh, 
major national recruits up front, mm -hmm. you know, because the, you got Bryce Foster, Hayden Connor, yeah. um, Donovan Jackson in 2021. Mm -hmm. That's just Houston area. So, yeah. I mean, uh, you have to definitely be smart about your approach, even if you're Texas or Texas A&M, because you don't want to you don't want to handicap yourself and not be able to take Hayden Connor and Donovan Jackson and Bryce Foster next year. You yeah. got to have space for those guys, and you also have to be able to present a package to them. Uh, at their position that you can say you can come in and make an impact. You're not going to have to sit the bench for four years because these top recruits don't want to do that. Greg Powers, an excellent level athlete, joins us for this week in Cruton here on Texas Football Today. Get involved in the conversation. Hashtag TF Today. Stay in Houston area. Underclassman of the week. It's crazy now to think about uh, kids in the class of 2021 are going to be juniors next year. This was like the when you're putting when you're Whoa. putting this together. The underclassman of the week is a 2021 now. It's, yeah, you're so like, used to writing 2020. Um, Richmond Foster wide receiver Cody Jackson. Um, another program down there in the Houston area that routinely puts out big time prospects, especially it seems like skill position kids. Right. Uh, picked up an offer Saturday from uh, uh, from Texas. Cody Jackson did. Uh, he's uh, got an uh, invitation to the Under Armour Future 50 uh, after their uh, after good showing at their their All America camp in in Houston. Um, this guy's already got offers from a number of big time programs, including Oklahoma, Oregon, LSU, Michigan, uh, Texas Tech. Uh, this guy uh, sure seems like you know people think of Richmond Foster, they think it's C.D. Lamb. Um, it's it just another another you know notch in the belt for Richmond Foster putting out big time kids. Uh, this one, Cody Jackson, the 2021 wide receiver. And I got to think that um, Oklahoma will be a school to watch mm. with Cody. They've already offered. Of course, he's going to have the opportunity to watch C.D. Lamb put up huge numbers. He's going to be one of the best wide receivers in NCAA mm -hmm. next year. Uh, Well-rounded skill set, and Cody's kind of in the same way. He's already six foot, six foot one, um, passes the eyeball test, and joined the thousand yard club as a sophomore. Yeah, so that's pretty impressive in and of itself. So he's already putting up the numbers to kind of to back up uh, his talent. Yeah, you know, it's easy to go into a camp and and showcase your skills and have a lot of people talk about you, but he's also doing it doing it in the pad, so it's the best of both worlds, and that just kind of speaks to how highly he may end up being rated by the time it's all said and done. Yeah, putting up a five thousand or a, rather a thousand yard season as a sophomore at the five A level, right. rather is is certainly impressive, and and you know to stand out as a youngster for Richmond Foster again is impressive because they do have so many guys that that kind of jump off the page, but this is a guy uh, you're going to be hearing more and more about. This is the first team all. State and all district guy, or rather, this was a, a guy with 57 catches, uh, you know, 13 yards or 13 touchdowns as a sophomore. Uh, certainly a name to watch. Uh, picked up that big offer from Texas. You figure that won't be the last big time offer he gets. Could be, could be a true Red River yeah. showdown, maybe, but as I scroll through his Twitter media and looked at it whenever I was putting this together, the only coach I saw him standing next to was Lincoln Riley. So mm -hmm. maybe, maybe that's a a possible telltale. Uh, and finally, let's get to our, our recruit of the week. Uh, our recruit of the week, another guy who who made his commitment this week uh, to a big time Power Five program, uh, kind of in the uh, the greater region. Let's say Alvin Shadow Creek defensive end uh, Alec Bryant. Um, there were a lot of guys who impressed us from this Shadow Creek team in two thousand and in eighteen. Um, this guy is coming back next year, and and after a monster junior season. Uh, it's no wonder people are paying attention to him. It's no wonder he got an offer from LSU and he, he snapped it up. He commits to LSU. But uh, Alec Bryant uh, showed out all year long a big reason why uh, they made uh, they made such a, a, an impact in their first varsity season. Such a talented squad. Mm -hmm. I mean, talent up and down that roster. Uh, but the one guy who jumps out to me physically is Alec Bryant. He's the younger brother of Indiana defensive lineman Alfred Bryant, who played at Manville and had some offers before he decided – to go to the Big Ten. Um, but what I really like about Alex's skill set is that he could be a versatile guy up front. He's strong enough to take on blockers and limit the run game, although um, he only had 53 tackles. But I think that's pretty good for a defensive end because yeah. he backed that up with 16 sacks. Yikes. So that's okay. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> uh, but he's also a young prospect. Mm. He's a guy who could be classified as a sophomore age-wise right mm. now. So that kind of speaks possibly of his potential upside uh, because he looks like he's 25. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he certainly <laughs> passes the eyeball test, a guy that you don't have to worry about. Uh, you know, 6'3", 240 as, uh, as a, a technical junior now, going, you know, but, but age-wise could be a sophomore. This guy uh, is, is certainly a name to know, and I know that uh, – Geez, I'm sure uh, coaches in the Houston area are sure tired of hearing his name, but they're going to have to deal with him for one more year. Uh, but he is heading to LSU. Um, LSU, LSU making a living off of these edge rushers man, from the Houston area. I'm Blavon telling Chason you. Chason and 
the list just keeps going with they, guys who they're able to recruit. It does seem like it seems like LSU's just got this like this type. They have a type, yep. and it's a Houston area defensive lineman. Yep. Uh, so Ed O uh, bringing in uh, Alec Bryant, defensive end from Shadow Creek. Max Thompson, we you got, got a, something. We got a question from Jacob John. Uh, I love that uh, we're getting the the crowd is getting more involved in the uh, this week in recruiting segment. Uh, and this is a fun question. Jacob John asks, which state per capita? produces the best recruit my gut tells me louisiana or maybe virginia hmm. um so this is interesting i'm actually working on the i'm crunching the numbers right now for the magazine for our uh, our um but i don't uh, for the recruiting between the numbers but i don't take into account the quality of prospect i'm only doing a lot of like kind of mm-hmm. volume mm-hmm. um it seems to me that it, it, it kind of varies um and that um you know routinely if you're talking about the number one player in the, in the nation uh, it's a, probably a good guess to say California, Florida, or Texas, maybe Ohio. Well, the 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 states that produce the most talent yes. are Texas, yes. California, Florida, and Georgia. Yes, those are the top four. If you're talking about per capita, I would probably guess. I mean, mm. this is I'm just oh, throwing. I would just what? throw it out there. I mean, Ohio is kind of backed off. I feel like in the grand scheme of things, as far as overall talent producing and top in NFL style mm-hmm. talent. Um, I would guess Georgia mm-hmm. would probably top the list because they produce a lot of prospects, but they not also huge, yeah. right. It's not huge. Um, uh, Louisiana is a, is a Louisiana good call. would be my guess. Yeah. yeah I'm kind of with them. There. Well, I can tell you that uh, don't sleep on Missouri. Yes. I can tell you that <laughs> sleep. I'm, per- actually, I'm serious. Don't sleep on Missouri as far as, as being some, able to produce as, as someone who played high school football in Missouri. <laughs> you are wrong. Okay, so here we go. I've got the numbers. If, now, we're talking volume and not necessarily quality, but these are FBS signees that signed for the class of 2018. You're exactly right. Per capita, Georgia, number one. Two per 100,000. Next, D.C., believe it or not. Nice. Interesting. D.C. Did DC our, is number two. Did, so our guy who asked, did the guy who asked the question know the the answer before? Listen, I, I, did did know. you know? Who was it, John? No, J- J- Jacob John, he's, he, he's a bright guy. He's one of our. He's one of our. Well, uh, he, he might have, there he, are ten he states. I don't think he was cheating. There are ten states cheating. that put out him. at least one prospect, one FBS signee from the high school uh, level per one hundred thousand. Uh, number one is Georgia. Number two is DC. Number three is Louisiana. This is twenty eighteen. Number four is Alabama. Number five is Florida. Six is Mississippi. Seven is Texas. Uh, eight is South Carolina. Nine. Oh, wow. Nine is Utah. And 10 is Hawaii. Wow. Which okay. is interesting. And I know that, like, going through this right now, I just got done putting the Pac-12 in, and they definitely do bring over their share of, of Hawaii players. And then Utah is also a name that we hear. I mean, Utah put out 36 high school signees in 2018. Hawaii is interesting, too, because they – I know. It's not a state that I keep up with necessarily, but I know mm-hmm. that they produced a couple of good quarterbacks over the last yeah. couple of years, and mm-hmm. they've sent guys to high mm-hmm. profile. Not a lot of people living in Hawaii. So. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Only I've got a population of 1.4 million. But this, in any Tepper case. is the spreadsheet wizard. I've got you it. had all that information ready to go. It's almost it was, like <laughs> it's almost like you were ready for that question. Mm-hmm. We've been talking about this over the last yeah. week. So. He, he's Greg Powers of Next Level Athlete. Follow him on Twitter at gpower 79 and follow Next Level Athlete at Next Level D1 Power. Appreciate it. Let's do it again next Let's week. Let's do it.